This summer, Shark Tank turned 10 years old, and the ABC reality show has changed a lot of entrepreneurs' lives over the past decade. 222 episodes have aired so far, and with season 11 premiering these days, we thought this would be a good time to look back at 10 of the biggest Shark Tank deals. Earlier this year, husband and wife duo Zach and Alyssa Brown came to Shark Tank seeking $150,000 for 5% of their business, Maki Doorstep. Their patent-pending vehicle rooftop assistance device allows drivers and passengers to have easy rooftop access to their cars in order to secure cargo or remove snow. Made from aircraft-grade aluminum and secured quickly and easily to the door latch, this tiny doorstep is capable of holding 2,500 pounds of vertical force and 2,000 pounds pounds of horizontal force without failure. Unsurprisingly, the Sharks loved the product. The potential for licensing agreements and the distribution deals that were already on the table for Maki Doorstep, but they still hesitated to invest because they simply felt like the product price was too high for the market, fearing that this may lead to a market infiltration of low-cost competitors. Damon eventually decided to make an offer of $450,000 for a 20% share in their company, which was significantly higher than what the Browns had asked for. However, the couple explained that they would consider selling the entire company rather than give up that big of a share of equity, and after considering this as well as the $3 million valuation of the company, Damon offered them the $3 million for the entire company as well as royalty payments to Zach's uncle for the remainder of the agreement, and the Browns didn't have to think twice before accepting the offer and thus selling Maki Doorstep in its entirety to Damon John. In May 2015, singer Pat Boone and his business partner Ethan Tucker appeared in Shark Tank, pitching their idea of the AirPod, a car that uses compressed air to drive the pistons and the engine and has absolutely no pollution output. The two were seeking $5 million in exchange for 50% of their company's zero pollution motors and eventually ended up making a deal with Robert who gave them exactly what they wanted for the opportunity to negotiate for the rights to bring it to the United States. While this was one of the largest deals ever made on the show, it unfortunately fell through later on as Zero Pollution Motors didn't own the rights across North America. There haven't been a lot of deals involving all five sharks, but one of the few was made in the show during the seventh season in 2015. JD Claridge and Charles Manning got Cuban, O'Leary, Herjavec, Griner, and John interested in their drone startup Xcraft. The five agreed to give the pair $1.5 million for 25% equity, split evenly between the sharks. In the nearly two and a half years since the episode aired, Xcraft had become not just a drone technology developer, but also a mass marketer of some of the most innovative products in the world of drone technology. Their main product, the X Plus One, combines a helicopter's hovering abilities with an airplane's speed and is helping Xcraft capture the drone market by storm. And with the sharks getting 25% of the company, profits, this was surely one of the smartest investments they made. When Vengil Labs co-founder Brian Shimerlick and Steve Bofill appeared in Shark Tank in Season 7, everything seemed normal initially, but the two then announced that they were looking for an investment of a whopping $2 million for just 12.5% of their company. The co-founders have taken all the ideas for vending machine improvements that had been around for a long time and finally implemented them in a cohesive, streamlined digital machine. Their 6-inch deep vending machine for small items had nothing to do with the traditional big clumsy vending machines, but was instead a very sleek looking machine that could be mounted on the wall, offering super fast service and cashless purchase options. The entrepreneurs explained that Vengo wasn't a vending company or looking to replace traditional vending, but a software media company that managed the Vengo digital network from the cloud. Their business plan was to sell the machines to vending companies and charge them a monthly rental fee for each machine used, in exchange for which Vengo would provide the software that controlled the machine. You're not gonna love this, so bear with me. We build it for 2,500, we sell it, for 2500 <laughs> Although the Sharks were skeptic at first, the two eventually struck a deal with Lori and Kevin after some fierce haggling, with the two Sharks investing the $2 million as a loan for 36 months at a 7% interest rate plus a 3% equity stake. 
In the penultimate episode of season 6, Dr. Christopher Zachalis, CEO of Syndiver Labs, introduced his company that makes synthetic human tissue and body parts, something that is vitally important to the advancement of medical training along with having many other useful applications. He eventually struck a deal with Robert who wanted to invest $3 million in exchange for 25% equity in the company, but when they later traded further information in initial terms, the partnership fell apart, mainly because Zachalis wasn't ready to be replaced as CEO. Syndiver Labs still ended up a huge success however, as the company is steadily growing and its products have appeared in many TV shows, including Grey's Anatomy, Mythbusters and CSI Crime Scene Investigation. Unfortunately, Melissa Carbone didn't scare all the sharks away with the characters of her live horror entertainment company 1031 Productions. Mark Cuban offered her $2 million for 20% stake in her Los Angeles-based company, and after the show, the company had to triple its cast to nearly 1,000, and had since also created New York Haunted Hayride, which, like the LA Haunted Hayride, is a Halloween-themed attraction held on all weekends in October. Apart from these attractions, there are also the great horror camp Powdery summers, The Ghost Ship, and The Great Movie Horror Night, and with over half a million of annual profits that the company has been pulling in since Carbone appeared on television, Cuban's investment has clearly turned out to be quite profitable. In Season 6, Brad Schultz, Amy Stedman, and Justin Fenchel entered the Shark Tank to introduce their Beatbox Beverages, an innovative brand of box wine. Seeking a $200,000 investment for a 10% stake of their company, they explained that their product was different from already existing ones because it was more fun and adventurous, as it wasn't just a brightly colored, tasty cocktail made from strong wine, but was also sold in festive packages that looked like boom boxes. Justin said that they hoped that their product would become the Red Bull of the alcohol industry and Mark Cuban was convinced it would work, saying you guys don't sell wine, you sell fun. For that reason he decided to invest in the company and they eventually struck a deal of an incredible $1 million for 33% equity. A wise decision as it turned out, as Beatbox Beverages went from a small company to being featured in 750 stores across 18 states in just one year. In episode 26 of season 5, Mark Cuban made a deal with Rob Dickens and Brad Scrutter, who together had founded an urban adventure and obstacle course company called Rugged Races. For 25% equity in their Boston-based company, the investor gave the pair $1.75 million, which allowed them to expand the company to 28 cities, with sales effectively doubling to $10.5 million within the first year alone. Due to the explosive growth, Dickinson's Crutter had to move to a new headquarters and hire additional staff workers. It seems that Cuban made a very wise investment, as the two co-founders also have plans to expand rugged races to international territory in the future. In a season 7 episode that aired in early 2016, Ben Young, CEO of Nexercise Incorporated, and Greg Coleman, President and Chief Operating Officer, appeared on Shark Tank seeking a $1.5 million investment in exchange for 8% equity stake in their company. They ended up getting an incredible offer from Mark Cuban for their popular, personalized, customizable workout apps work it. He was willing to give them the $1.5 million in exchange for 10% of the business and $1.5 million worth of unsold ad space in the app. Young and Coleman decided to accept the deal during taping, but it didn't actually go through after the show due to a difference in vision for the product. Nevertheless, Swerkin became even more popular than it already was after the episode aired and eventually turned out to be a big success. The app is currently available in free and paid versions for both Android and iOS. OS users. In episode 11 of season 6, Kevin O'Leary invested $2.5 million in Andrew McMurray's single serve wine company Zips in exchange for a 10% stake, as well as the option to buy another $2.5 million worth of equity at the $25 million valuation. McMurray, the national wine consultant for the company located in Brunswick, New Jersey, accepted O'Leary's deal, making this the largest deal in the Shark Tank history. Even though Zips is now out of the whole winemaking business, the the company is accepting licensing opportunities for other winemakers through their website. 
Thank you for checking this video out and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again thank you for watching and see you next time.